All right, guys, in the Monster Factory with Don Hollywood Underwood, we're about to do a little Q and A with some questions that you guys ask. We have no idea where this is gonna go. We're gonna let it ride. Check this thing out. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. people liked this 13 people commented on it and it is from rug r-u-g-g zero one eight seven rug in the house yes he wants to know what happened woody to you after the arm wars in 2011 you were in good shape and disappeared off the scene like red october it was uh, 2010 uh, it didn't air into 2011 uh, but the match took place december 2010 after wf worlds go ahead where did you go don where did you go <laughs> what happened to you this guy um, God, that's, uh, I mean, that's 10 years ago. I've continued to, to, to actually, that was 10, so I'd won the Arnolds. I and went and won the Arnolds in 12. Yeah. I beat Bortolotto and a group of other guys. Um, heck, I was at the Arnold 14, took second to Bresden then, so I, I, I didn't run that away. That was 13, wasn't it? 14. 14? Well, didn't you take second, 13 to I, take you or somebody? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So, um, and I watched those matches, and I really should have continued to pull. I think I would have won those. Um, yeah, no, I just took some time off after Game of Arms. You know, um, you work that hard for something, and it goes away. You know, there's a whole lot more to that. But, uh, yeah, a lot of that was just uh, just upset, depression, and just saying, man, if it's, if it's just going to end like that, then, heck, I'm just going to just take some time off and, and do what I want to do because – Again, just a lot of work. But yeah, I, I pulled up till 14. So you're referring to depression after the ending of Game of Arms, which well, was sudden. It, it was kind of all, even prior to that. You know, I, I'm, I'm an addict. I don't know if people know that or not, but um, for a long, long time, I mean, um, I hit a lot of a lot of drug use and party real hard. Um, so that had a lot to do with it. You get to a certain point in your life where you can't hide it anymore. So you've got to close the door. And um, when you do that, you're not wanting to be in front of people for them to see, especially the people and the, the fans that, that love you. You don't want to show up looking like a train wreck because they're going to know. So basically went and hit for a while, you know, and uh, figured out that that wasn't a lie for me and started on a new path. And, hey, we're sitting here talking here we about go. it now. You may not know is that Game of Arms approached Michael, and it was he knew the shape that you were in and what you were dealing with and part of the reason he refused to be a part of what they were doing was because of what they were doing with you specifically i don't blame you for that well know? i mean i was told that they put a bunch of shot glasses in front of you and told you to yeah and i was like a lot of that i was like motherfuckers i mean we're professional athletes don't and for one don't contribute to your addiction don't be the person you know and so i didn't like that i didn't like that approach i mean it's crazy to the point like so i was the first person they contacted before they saw you at the arnold that year yeah and um, I, was, I was going through some shit. I was like, I don't know if I can be involved right now. Yeah. Um, and then they, they get you, they keep rolling, and then I'm at the, uh, at the CrossFit Games, and they approach me, and because they talked to Rebecca, I'm like, oh, can I, I'd love to talk to your husband, blah, blah, blah. And Rebecca's like, yeah, Michael would love to. And as soon as they walk up to me, they introduce themselves, I'm like, yeah, I don't like that shit you are doing. Right. I said, we're professional athletes. You know, that's like, it really backfired because Rebecca thought I was going to be super nice about it, but I was... Greatly offended that they were doing that to my friend. You know? So you I didn't know, like and, that. and that means a lot to me, and, and I had no idea about this. Mm. You know, the thing is, is looking back in, in any kind of unscripted reality show, they are going to take the substance and run with it. Um, as entertaining as I am, give me some alcohol. Um, I miss a few planes. Uh, you know, I become a. Now they want to, you know, highlight it. You know, and and that's that's kind of the thing that that made Game of Arms so hard to deal with as as an athlete and an addict together right because when you want to get high or you are high they're in your face and it's uncomfortable so you're wondering do they know maybe i don't know um but getting through it it, it was the oh man it was rough it, it it should have been fun this this whole experience of tv was cool it was great but it should have been fun and it was, it was a hard, hard work. Love to do it again. I think take that same crew again now. You had alcoholics, addicts, sex addicts. 
everybody on the show, had, you know, with an exception of a couple of people, had some major problems. Right. It was a show to watch. People was going to keep on trucking because there was plenty of content. But when it canceled, I think, I think it had a lot to do with the big man upstairs because we would not be here today if you handed me and a bunch of other people the amount of money that was coming for us. It would have killed us. It would have, and it would have kept on going. It would have been in the media, and people would have loved it and say, "Oh, that poor big man." You know what? God is good all the time. He blessed me with taking something that very few people in the world. And I get an opportunity, uh, and he took it away. And that was where it kind of all began. You go, man, what if I didn't do the things that I did, you know? Um, where would we be today? Some of the other guys, I've had conversations with them, same thing. Where would we be today? We're all fathers and worked hardworking America, uh, athletes. There's some incredible stories now that blow Game of Arms away. Why we're not doing something now with the talent and the experience is beyond me. Yeah. You know, um, but it was, it was, it was very difficult to do. Good experience, lots of fun stories, but, um, you know, you can't be successful being an addict. You can't be. No, nah, man, it's short term. It is. And it's, uh, you know, life uh, is funny. Uh, when I want to talk about God, I'm, I'm a believer, and if you're not, I'm, I'm not trying to run God down your throat. Uh, but at some point in time, you gotta think somebody's pushing you in directions and giving you these thoughts. You don't look in the mirror and go, "What do I do?" You know, the answers come to you because I had a little girl, you know, and that that changed my whole world. It gave me purpose again, um, and having her and enjoying the time, you start reflecting back on the good times that you've had in the past. Uh, me and this guy ran, God, we ran the block for many years. <laughs> you know, go uh, way back. I'm talking, it was, dude, it was me and him. There wasn't nothing else. I mean, everybody knew Michael and Don, Bad Brothers, whatever you want to call it. It, it was here, it was in Europe. We were we were killing it. And you kind of watched me spiral. You know, you it was hard. Me. It was hard to watch. And, you, and there were many times you've, you've just said, Woody, man, what are you doing? Yeah, we talked about it last night some, and I, like, I had to distance myself because I couldn't, <coughs> I just couldn't see it. I couldn't be around you, you know, and uh, that's what's, that's what's cool about this now, that we're getting to do this, and like you said, uh, having the opportunity, having it taken away from me, growing and maturing from that experience, now, who knows what's coming. God, the comeback is going to be, this hurts. <laughs> the comeback story is always better, right? Y you yeah. know, it, it, well, because I was at a pretty high level, you know, you had mentioned some things. Uh, prior to me coming down here, um, if you don't know the accolades that I've that I have, it's it's um, it's up there. Um, travel the road with you. I've watched you win. Um, I had to win. We were we were a team. It wasn't Michael win and then oh and his, and Don's out in the first round. No, we were we were something to deal with. I was a super heavy. He was heavy, so that kind of kept us apart. Um, Mike's always been a crutch for me. His style's you know just been. The worst thing in the world for me. And we've we've had this. Conversation. It was just the fact that if you couldn't that flash me, you. yeah, if you couldn't flash me, that it's just gonna very few people. Very long want, match. Very few people want it more than me. And you know, you were a style that was very explosive. Correct. And once the match stopped, uh, it was Michael's. And it, it, it was it, all the time. There was the no. Pendulum would just swing to my favor. You know. Yeah. yeah. No, that's accurate. But, and then you got really good at it. You got better and better, stronger, stronger. And, mm. and uh, now you're what number? 12, 13 in the world? Probably probably top top 100. Probably top 100. Good arm wrestler. And like I said, you deserve everything you get, man. So I'm proud of you. I appreciate proud it. Proud to call you friend, man. Are you planning a comeback? And given the choice, who would you like to pull most? Well, Ooh. don't call it a comeback. 